right here. Uh, let me get Congressman Jeff Miller. Of course, he came down, uh, had trouble getting here because of the flight cancellations and, of course, the mess he found when he got into Escambia County and Santa Rosa County. First, thanks for being here. What are you doing here and what have you seen so far? Well, I think I you know, needed to see firsthand you know, the, the damage, the, the devastation that's occurred here. Uh, of course, the, the county and the city are working, getting their numbers together to give to the state. The state will pass them up to the federal government. Then we've got to move uh, as quickly as we can to make sure that the funding flows back down to uh, northwest Florida. Now, as far as that's concerned, folks are still asking, is it time to call that 1-800-FEMA number yet? Is, has that been kicked in? Because a lot of the folks who have suffered a lot of damage didn't have flood insurance and the homeowners won't cover it. Well, I think, you know, folks still need to be a little bit patient. Uh, we're in, you know, the second day, if you will, and the FEMA does have the ability to help those who did not have insurance. I mean, over in the, the Crescent Lake area, I talked to folks over there whose houses are broken in half and, and there's no way to repair them at all. Some of them said they had no insurance, not just flood insurance, they had no flood insurance. I mean, no insurance even on their vehicles as well. So devastating. And you come over to the to the east side of town and over around Piedmont, uh, you, you saw it all uh, on, on the news last night and, and through the day. Uh, the most important thing is to make sure, of course, that people have housing. Uh, and then, of course, the long term is how do they get made whole again? You know, was it, you know, is there insurance that's going to cover it or is FEMA going to come in and do part of that work too? When you look at the infrastructure needs that are here, they're dramatic. I can't imagine that they won't hit the number of 26 plus million dollars uh, that's necessary in order to trigger uh, the federal response that needs to happen here. But, you know, what I'm concerned about is that although it affected everybody yesterday, uh, as the waters recede and folks get back to normal, they're going to forget some of these geographic areas and some of these people are really in, in tough shape. And that's the mission that you're going to have to make sure nobody forgets. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think most elected officials uh, and, and, of course, all of the churches, uh, I was talking with my pastor, uh, texting back and forth from Olive Baptist. Of course, our church got flooded. Uh, and, of course, our folks are out. Chainsaw teams are out working. Folks are working shovels, and, and there's going to be a need for food. I mean, you know, people have no power. Uh, it's kind of like a hurricane situation, except the geographic area is much smaller uh, where a lot of the drainage problems exist. Now, I mean, given the events of the recent days across the southeast where 35 people killed by the tornado spawned by this very system that brought so much rain here, record rain, uh, do we have to wait in line for help given the deaths in other areas or is everybody going to be treated uh, as quickly as possible at the same time? No, the funding's got to flow uh, as quickly as possible regardless. So there, there's no waiting in line for anybody because there's going to be another uh, disaster somewhere next week, unfortunately. And I think the most important thing is to make sure that the funds are available. If we have to go through and add extra funds into FEMA, we're going to go through a situation where we're going to have to try and find the offsets. Uh, I can, we can do that. That's not a, not an issue. We had a problem when Hurricane Sandy went through and we didn't, they wanted to do the funds without an offset. Uh, I think it's important that we try to find the dollars uh, within the, the current budget system and that shouldn't be a problem. The flood insurance program making news for quite some time about rising premiums. Of course, we passed some measures to at least uh, knock the top off of that, at least for the time being. What does this say about that program and its affordability uh, and, and more people perhaps being more skittish to accept that kind of flood insurance? I know it's a once in a lifetime event, this kind of rain, or let's hope it is. Uh, but thoughts on that national flood insurance and what should be done about it? Well, first of all, I don't think it, the vast majority of the houses that were damaged were in, in flood zone areas. And I, the maps were, were just released, so you're not going to see the maps changed because of the event that took place. I mean, we're, we're talking about not a 25-year, not a 100-year storm, but probably a storm that may never have been seen and may never be seen again. So what we were looking at doing, of course, is, is trying to shift the burden back to the person that physically owned the homes. A lot of homes were second homes so that the, the cost was not overly subsidized from a, from a federal standpoint. A lot of these people, they didn't opt to take it because they weren't in a flood zone. Well, yeah, a lot of people are in that. Does that beckon uh, maybe a reanalysis of those flood zones, and or is that not? No, I, I wouldn't expect that you would see that uh, because, again, this is those once-in-a-lifetime type storms, uh, and there were numerous things that kind of cascaded against each other that caused this to take place. Uh, I, you know, the flood zone areas are certainly areas that have continually flooding uh, problems. And so I would not suspect that you will see the maps redrawn because of this. A lot of these areas, you know, you go down Piedmont, and you look where the entire street was wiped out. I mean, just, you know, eight feet uh, worth of the roadbed and everything underneath it. 
Uh, it's going to take a long time to go back and rebuild, but of course that road is supposed to be part of the drainage system itself. Uh, had the road not failed, you know, uh, for whatever reason, I mean, like again, a, a myriad of cascading uh, events that took place that just uh, caused a disaster, a disastrous effect. And again, my concern is people that are, that are not from the areas where the houses are, and they're tucked. Some are tucked away where you we wouldn't see them if you're just driving down right. Michigan Avenue. Uh, and there, there are folks that are really hurting, and they're going to be hurting for a long time. Were you prepared for what you saw? Are you satisfied with, I know it's early, but are you satisfied with the local response and state response so far? I think so. I mean, the governor called me the first thing yesterday morning. Um, I don't think he had any idea where I was. Of course, I was in Washington. Uh, it was telling me that the National Guard and every asset that they had would be put into play. Uh, I think that uh, the initial response was excellent. As time, time grows on, you're going to have folks that are going to get anxious uh, about trying to get things back the way they used to be. It's going to take a while uh, in order for that to happen. But I would say the response from, from the city, from the county, and the state uh, were excellent. Uh, and I know you didn't come here to discuss this, but we're at the scene of the explosion last night at the jail. Whether it was related to the flooding and if that caused a problem or whatever else, are you aware of any investigation on the federal level about uh, criminal negligence uh, here at the jail, or can you shed any light on what happened here beyond what we heard at the press conference? I have not had a chance to talk with any of the ATF folks, uh, so I, I can't comment uh, because I haven't even had an opportunity uh, to tour the facility here. I just came up in order to talk to you. I intend to talk uh, to some folks that are here. And again, it, you're, it's very early uh, in the stages, and I think that it needs to be done right rather than fast. Okay, Jeff Miller, Congressman, District 1 of Northwest Florida. Thanks, Bob. Nice talking to you. Thank, Thank you for you. taking the time. Okay.